Now that we've learned the inertia matrix, we have the beginnings of a lot of great applications. In solid body mechanics, we're going to see how vector products and matrix algebra and integrals all combine together into something really wonderful. So let's, let's assume that we have a solid body in 3D that is rotating about some axis. We're going to derive a few facts about the physics of that rotating body. Now you may not have seen any of this kind of stuff before. You may not have had the appropriate physics classes. That's okay. We're just going to have a little bit of fun with a few definitions. So let's get started. We're going to frame a lot of this in terms of vectors, and we're going to work at the infinite or element level in terms of deriving some features, some properties, going over some definitions. Okay, so let's say that we've got a mass element that is rotating about an axis in 3D. I'm going to fix that axis. I'm going to call that mass element dm, and then I'm going to fix a coordinate frame that has its origin somewhere on that axis of rotation. Having done that, let's define the position vector from that origin to the mass element. Let's call that vector r. I'm going to let n be the unit vector along the axis of rotation that is pointed in the appropriate direction. If I say that v is the velocity of that mass element rotating about the axis, if v is the velocity vector, and if I look at the angle phi that is subtended by that plane in which r and the rotation axis sit, then the angular velocity is going to be a vector omega, a little omega, I kind of like that symbol. It's going to be this vector omega that is parallel to the axis of rotation and pointed in the appropriate direction and has the appropriate length. We say that omega is the vector that satisfies omega equals d phi dt times n. That is, when I say d phi dt, I mean the rate of change of the angle that the mass element is making about that axis of rotation. So that's the magnitude of omega. And then the direction is in that vector along the axis of rotation. If I specify a bit more that v is equal to omega cross r using the cross product, then what we see is that this vector n and thus omega are pointed in the direction along the axis. That's given in terms of the right hand rule. Now note that for a solid body, all the elements have the same angular velocity so that we get a well-defined vector. Now, what do we do with it?